We praise God for uh, him leading us, opening up uh, services uh, today. And it's good to see all of y'all. I know uh, many of y'all had to fight to get here. But that's all right. Sometimes construction can turn into a blessing if it smooths out the way. You don't get it. I said, hey, man. Uh, y'all don't y'all don't have no let's try this one more time y'all don't want no construction do you you want you want uh it uh easy process uh let me tell you what they did uh some of our concrete was curved and messed up so in them fixing the street they fix some of our stuff so sometimes you could just thank god for a little stuff sometimes uh, uh a bump can be a blessing so y'all get on in here and stop fussing. Hey Amen. We praise God for uh, the street construction and all that God is doing for us here at Oak Gardens. All right. So we are on our second part of our series on uh, smart money. Y'all remember we talked about last week that smart money is when the, your money is working for you and you're not working for it. Now that's a very important uh, um uh, concept. Uh, you probably say, how in the world can I not work for the money? When you prioritize God's resources in the right order, God flips over the natural system to what's known as a supernatural system. Let me give it to you again. When you seek God first, he adds. And no one can do math better than God. All right? That means that if he owns all the resources and you celebrate the one who's giving the resources, can't the resources be provided better from the one who gives you the source? So the beauty of it is that when we start prioritizing God more than we prioritize ourselves, then God starts viewing us with the idea that we know where all of our blessings flow from. Now, this is very important. This is very important because we talked about over the last couple of weeks that uh, last, uh, last week that we trust God with everything else but our money. We trust him. God heal me. God deliver me. God bless my marriage. God bless, cover this house, cover these bills, cover this, cover that. But when it comes to God, I'm going to put my trust in you, even with finances. It changes the dichotomy of how we view what God will and can do. So here's the idea. Here's the idea. E each one of us have to start off with the sum total that everything I have comes from God. So if everything I have comes from God, I need to acknowledge where I got it from. And how do I do that? By seeking him first. Okay. So here's, here's why it's so quiet in here today. When I say I'm willing to seek God first, it's actually saying I'm willing to be second. How do I become second? It's a word that we're going to be using tonight, today, and Sunday called self-control. All right. Here it is. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5. Y'all all right this morning? Everybody say amen. amen. If anybody need a Dr. Pepper? Okay, let me go. Uh, go get Michelle and her a Dr. Pepper for out of the deli. Uh, all right, Mountain Dew. Everybody needs Mountain Dew. <coughs> here's... here's um, Galatians chapter 5, let's, let's look at this together. I just want verse number 22 and 23. Look what the Bible says. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. So how do I know that I have the Holy Spirit? It's not foaming at the mouth. It's not speaking in tongues. It's not rolling during the service. It's not running up and down the aisle during the service. Those nowhere in the Bible, I'm not trying to, discount them. If you speak in tongues, God bless you. If you roll on the floor, God bless you. Uh, that's, I'm not trying to discount that. What I'm trying to say is that Paul says you can speak in tongues and cuss and you don't have the fruit of the Spirit. You can roll up and down the aisle and holler more than anybody on Sunday. And I need some of y'all to holler a little more. Uh, <laughs> I need somebody to say something. Uh, uh, that That's not showing that you have the fruit of the Spirit. What is the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit says that the Holy Spirit governs and guides my life. 
That's what the fruit of the Spirit is. We're going to study this next year. But, but the Holy Spirit, this is what it produces when you have it. If you don't have it, you ain't produce it. What does it produce? It produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, not just love people who love you. That's easy. This love that Jesus talks about is, he said, it's easy for a man to love those who love him, but it takes fruit of the Spirit love to love people who hate you. Joy, even when the road is bad on, on Polk Street. Peace, that's internal that um, uh, matriculates to external. Patience with yourself and others. Oh, look at there. Kindness, being kind to everybody. Consider when you go to the grocery store that maybe she had a bad day. It's, it's what Paul uh, talks about in Galatians chapter 6. is giving allowances for others. That means you come up with a reason in your mind of why they're having, acting like they are. So you don't treat them like they are acting. You treat them like how God acted towards you. That's what that, that word is talking about. Kindness. Goodness. Everybody say goodness. That means you're good to everybody. Faithfulness, that is the word consistency. You're not hit and miss. You're faithful. Look at the next verse, number 23. Uh, gentleness, ooh, isn't that beautiful? Gentleness, you're gentle with everyone, Christians and non-believers. And here's where I want to spend some time. Self-control, everybody say self-control. 99% of our problem with money is that we don't have self-control. Let me give it to you again. Self-control means that I can, this is a deep definition. This is a deep definition. I had to go to Oxford University to get this definition for self-control. It simply means you can control self. Y'all didn't catch the joke. Y'all not even joking today. I thought that was a good one. I thought of that one at 6 o'clock this morning. How can I control self? I control self with how I treat people. How I treat enemies, how I treat people I hate, how I treat everyone, but I also control myself how I deal with God's resources. Do y'all catch that? Because I want to say to you one, one more time, you don't need more money. If God gives it to you, God bless you. God might be watching how do you manage what you have. Because mismanagement of a little doesn't change when you get more. You just have more to mismanage. I'm, I'm having good church all by myself. But boy, let, let's, let's just you and I shout. Because he's the only one having church with me. So what is, what is it? When I have self-control, when I'm kind, when I'm gentle, when I'm patient, when I have the fruit of the Spirit, then you don't need any rules. Paul says, you don't need no law when you got all this. I don't have to tell people don't kill when I treat everybody with kindness. He said, you don't have to have a law when you got this fruit because the Holy Spirit is your governance. Are y'all you know, with me? So what, what is it, why is this important? Because this is the point I want you to write down. Money can add meaning to life, but is not the meaning of life. Y'all let that marinate. Money can add the meaning to life, but it's not the meaning of life. Now, my breath is stinking. I, I'll put that candy right there. I smelled my own breath. Have you ever smelled your own breath? <laughs> I said something, and then I walked into it. And I said, Holy Spirit. I thought it was the fruit of the Spirit. Bad breath. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Money can add the meaning. If you living for money, you got a low life. Because you're chasing something that you never can get a full appetite of. Because the more you get, the more you want. The more you expand, the more you feel like you got to expand. The more you buy, the more you got to buy. Have you ever noticed they always have an upgrade? 
time you get a phone. And all they doing is circling back. All they do is circle back. Y'all remember when we started off, we had flip phones. Now the end thing is a flip phone. It, because they got to keep creating something for you to purchase. Because we are a consumer-driven uh, group. And because as Christians, we have no Galatians chapter uh, 5, verse number 23, self-control, we allow money to control us instead of us controlling it. You remember Sunday I said money is a much better servant than it is a master. Because a dollar has never told me what to do. I can tell a dollar what to do. Because if I control it, it doesn't control me. Are y'all catching what I'm saying? So how does money add meaning to life? It adds meaning to life when you prioritize it the right way. Because if you're seeking yourself first, because you got to have that new outfit, you're watching what everybody else has on, you're watching what everybody else drives, you're watching where everybody else lives, you're watching this, you're watching that, and you have an appetite for more, for fresh, and you haven't even worn what you have in your closet. Somewhere you have to say to yourself, am I honoring me or honoring God? That is great if there's no heaven or hell. But if you plan on living the afterlife, you have to say, am I seeking God first? Are y'all with me? So here it is. Money can add the meaning of life, but uh, it's not the meaning of life. So how do you do this, Pastor? We have to learn how to live within margins. Everybody say margins. All right. Uh, what does it mean to live within margins? I got a black marker today. What does it mean to live within margins? Uh, back when we were in school, back when we were in school, uh, we used to have to write on some paper. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember when we had paper? And on that paper, there was a red line that went down both sides. Y'all remember that? Oh, man, what an interesting time it was. And then at the top, there was a large, there was a large piece. And then you start getting lines. Y'all remember that? Y'all not going to have church with me? And you had to write your papers inside the line. Okay? All right. So here's the challenge. Some of us don't, don't follow this plan. We do our budget off of copy paper. Now the difference between writing paper, can y'all see that? And copy paper is that they're both paper, but one has margin. Why is that important? Because when you live life and when you live your finances within the margins, then you have some non-negotiable. Let me show you. What's the non-negotiable? I won't ever get in the way of... And you know what's so amazing about this? That in the writing paper, 10% of the paper is margin. <laughs> that means 10% of it you shouldn't even work on. Y'all not have preached, man. That's all I got for y'all. But when you work your budget, when you work your budget off a of copy paper, all of this is me. And that's, that's how we, so, so here's the challenge. If I got, if I get more money, more money, instead of me thinking about God, I just add paper. Because when you have the mindset, it's about me, then this is a life of no self-control. I, I didn't understand it, but I see it now even, even better in my, my mother's life when it comes to my father. Because my, back in my, my day, when I grew up in a good time, I feel sorry for these kids of this generation. We, we used stuff instead of, until it broke. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's the same thing. B broke or wore out is the same thing. Uh, that means you couldn't use it anymore. And what I'm talking about, you couldn't use it anymore. I'm talking about you really, really, really couldn't use it anymore. So I remember for years, 
for years, church, we would turn the washer on with a, uh, some pliers. Mama, you say amen when you can. We had a back door that had a, uh, one of them screens in it, you know, and the screen started coming out. Man, it was two years before that. We would open just the frame. And when somebody came over the house, they could have stepped right through it. But we said, welcome to the day. Your house. Because they knew how to live under limits. Okay. Here's why, why it's so beautiful. Because my daddy lived a self-controlled life. My mother is getting the benefit. Now, she didn't always want mama the self-control. Yeah. Because it's easy for us to have an appetite of competition. But if you don't prepare for when you don't have paper, you'll have a time when you don't have paper. Okay, this, that, ain't no, that, ain't just, that ain't just a, a Christian principle. That's a life principle. Let me help you. Can, can y'all see my boy? Can y'all see my boy? Because Sunday y'all said y'all couldn't see it. I'm going to let everybody see it. Y'all see that? It got wheels on it. Okay, here, here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. The difference is, for the Christian, for the believer, you have a higher calling than me. Your calling, you're not an American citizen. You're a kingdom citizen. So I want more people to come to the kingdom. So the only way I can help people to come to the kingdom is by living within the margins. Are y'all with me? So what Jesus does, Jesus teaches us how to live within the margin. He gives us one illustration, one story to help us to live within the margins. My son told me that was a horrible example you gave son to daddy. I couldn't see nothing. I said, well, go to church and stop watching me. He went to church. He went to church, and then he watched me to criticize the pastor. Okay, because uh, he done took three biblical study classes. Now he think he's somebody. He think he's T.D. Jakes. <laughs> Have you thought about, boy, I told him something the other day. I'll tell you what I think about. All right. Um, now here, are expert. These kids are something else, ain't they? Been in one biblical study class, but no more than I know. Okay, so look, look, look what the Bible said. Look at what the Bible said. Turn to John 3, uh, John 6, John 6. And I want you to look, catch, catch uh, what Jesus says, how you can live within, uh, live within the margins. Here, he says, he says, he says, don't store up treasure here on earth where moth eat them, rust, destroyed them, and where thieves break in and steal. Y'all remember that? Store your treasure in heaven where moth, rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Because wherever your tr treasure is, there's the desires of your heart. So what they used to do, Mama Mitchell, what they used to do back in uh, Pharisee and Sadducee, they, they had pockets inside their robes. And the pockets... They would always have, they don't have pocketbooks like we have, but they, the pocket would be right here because their money was right out over their heart. So what Jesus says, wherever your money is, I can tell where your heart is. There was symbolism. He said, I can point at your heart because your heart is your money. That's why he says, you can't serve two masters. You got to choose the heart or you got to choose your money. If you choose God, you get both. So he says, wherever your treasure is, there your heart is also. All right, here it is. The eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. If you got a bad, if, if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with light. If your, if your eye is healthy, I'm sorry, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters. Can y'all see it? No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one, love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and be enslaved to money. All right. He, t he tells us how to do it. How, do you, how does he do it, Pastor? <coughs> he says in verse number 25, that is why I tell you, do not worry about everyday life. I just got this. Somebody texted me this 
this scripture, and they took it out of context. Whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear, is, <laughs> isn't, life more than <laughs> isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look what it says, 26. Look at the birds. Y'all see the birds? They don't plant, harvest, store food for in their barn, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable than a bird? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't work. They don't worry. They don't even make their own clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for a wildflower that are here today and thrown un into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate your thoughts. And they are dominate the thoughts of an unbeliever. But your heavenly father already knows what you need. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live right. And he will give you everything you need. That ought to make somebody shout. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring his own worries. Today's trouble is enough. Okay. <coughs> here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. When you choose to live within the margin, you put God or the Lord in a spot where you don't negotiate. I hate putting the Lord at the bottom, but y'all catch what I'm saying. This is out of bounds. Y'all see that? Okay. So when you work, work it right, when you work it right, and you take care of the Lord first, then he will feed you, clothe you, Keep you. All right? That's how it works. When you don't put God first and you work your system with God not being priority, you're responsible for it all. Let me ask you, how's that working out for you? So now I got to feed myself. I got to clothe myself. I got to take care of myself. I got to heal myself. I got to keep my mind straight. I got to balance my children. So what he simply says is, I can make this easier for you. Here it is. Me. God. First. Okay. What do you mean by that, Pastor? God is saying, if you seek me first, I'll take care of the rest. If you don't seek me at all, you're responsible. Because he says, when you're worried about what you're going to dress, what you're going to eat, what you're gonna, where you're going to sleep, what you're going to do, it occupies all of your free time. So if I'm occupied on next, I can't, sit up, I can't wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and thank him for a cool morning. Do y'all remember the time in your life where you didn't think about the weather? Or you were so busy trying to get it? That God would let a, breeze, a cool breeze come and kiss you on the cheek and you missed it? You know why? Because you were occupied with something else but God. 
when you seek him first, life becomes easy. Because, man, when God is responsible for what he can control, what, when God is responsible for what I can control, then it gives me, go back to Galatians chapter 3, or chap, chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5. Look what it gives me. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22. I know you're multitasking, uh, brother uh, uh, Krigler. Galatians chapter 5, verse number uh, 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit of our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Look at the next one. Gentleness and self-control. You see what he put last? When you have self-control, God produces the rest for you. Because if you don't have self-control, you can't have peace. If you don't have self-control, you can't have gentleness. If you don't have self-control, you're going to always be broke. If you don't have self-control, you're going to treat everybody like they treat you. If you don't have self-control, it means you are out of control. And many of us in the African-American culture are financially out of control because we will buy a Louis Vuitton belt and don't have $5 in our wallet. When, you, when your purse has more on the outside than you have on the inside, you throw. Y'all hear me? I mean, when, when your purse is $500 and you ain't got $500, that's crazy. Do you know what poor folks do? Poor folks watch TV to look at rich folks. <laughs> y'all ain't going to, y'all done got mad at me. That's all right. I'll try it again. I'll try it again Sunday. I, I don't have time to watch television. That's why I let it go. And I find out when I let it go, I've been more productive. Amen, somebody. Because that phone and that television and all these are distractions to your peace. So what, what does it mean, Pastor? What does it mean? How do we do that? I gave you, I gave you something Sunday that I'm going to repeat. Y'all going to hear a lot of repeating this, this month. Because I ain't got that much for you. But, <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm honest with y'all. <laughs> I mean, the Lord been quiet with me this week. Uh, uh, we've been, we've been rising. Let me, let me tell you, how, how, do I, how do I live within margins? Okay. Uh, the first thing you need to ask yourself is what can I, I got to like this white boy. What can I live without you know they got these boards now that you can write on them mama uh bellinger and it's a computer screen and then it turns your stuff into words have y'all seen those yeah they pretty neat I, I i want one and i i for the for the kingdom of god and i sent a picture to our finance director but she knows how to live within limits uh she didn't even respond to it what can I live without? What do you have? What do you have? Or what are you spending money on that you don't have to have? Because you got to catch, you got to catch, I just have a few more minutes. You got to catch something. He said he'll take care of all of your. So all I'm at is asking you is what do you need? Let me let you, let me, if you can identify what you don't need that you're paying for, then you can start finding the Lord in your margins. My daddy lived his whole life, and he was dead set. He died at the perfect time, because he was not going to buy a bottle of water. <laughs> I remember being at a gas station with him. You actually going to buy some water? <laughs> I mean, that, was, that just threw his mind that what used to be free. But you, have you noticed that they've normalized it? Because when you try to drink your house water that you're paying for, it don't taste right. <laughs> now we got flavored water and, and everything else because the devil has a way of increasing your appetite so he can suffocate what you need. Are y'all with me? Are with me? So here's the, here's the first question you need to ask yourself. What do you need? What do you need? And how do you identify that? How do you identify that? How do you identify that? Three months, the last three months of the year, 
We're in October, right? Uh, we got October through December. This is when you do your budget. Okay, this is practical living. This is when you do your budget. What do you mean, Pastor? Every year, I start in October examining what subscriptions do we have that we don't need. Because there are things, I caught it this year. There were things I was buying for Blake Grammarly. It's a, Grammarly is a deal that's $99 a year, uh, but at his school, he gets it for free. But a, a, a renewal came up because I watch our money. $100 came out, and the $100 wasn't on the budget sheet. So you know what it made me do? It made me go pick up the phone, call Grammarly. It's some work. It's some work. And call Grammarly and say, I don't need it anymore because I'm getting it for, I'm paying for it at another place. I was about to say I get it for free. I'm paying for it. it it's going down 20 to Abilene. Are y'all with me? But some of us will say, and when I was talking to Member Sunday, uh, they said, I just don't have it. I just don't have it. You don't have it because you can't find out what you, the difference between what you want and what you need. So here, here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. Three months, October uh, to December. Find out this will identify who is your master. Wherever your money goes, because God said it, wherever your money is, that's who your master is. So it will, it will identify, if you examine your budget, uh, first of all, you need to get a budget. That means simply budget, and it says, you need to know how your money go. Y'all know what that means? For every dollar, every dollar needs a name on it. I don't care if you make enough to cover your bills. That doesn't make any difference. You need to know where all your money is going because some of us are paying for stuff we don't need. All right? So you need to find out who your master is. Identify where your money is going. And then you need to, secondly, that's first. Is this happening to anybody? I said, is this happening? Y'all don't act like it. Is this happening to anybody? Second, you got to prioritize what's important. Okay? Prioritize what's important. There's some stuff that even the Lord wants you. He wants you to have a house. He wants you to have a roof over your head. God, God is not stingy. He, he wants you to, he, wa he don't want you to be on the side of the road if he can help it. He don't want you to uh, be looking nasty. And that's not what God preaches nor, nor shares. But when you prioritize, it means that you make him important. Can I give you, can I give you something? Um, first Corinthians, pull up first Corinthians, uh, not for second, uh, not, I'm about to say not for second, uh, when Paul talked, um, he said, uh, that there be no collection when I shall come. First Corinthians 16, try first Corinthians 16, verse number one. And let's see, let's see what that comes up with. Uh, first Corinthians chapter 16, y'all give it time. That wasn't in my notes, but the Holy Spirit, uh, gave it to him. Now, there, uh, here it is. Thank you, uh, Brother Hurd. Now, regarding your question about the money being collected for God's people in Jerusalem, you should follow the same procedure I gave to the church in Galatia. Look at this. Look at this. Verse number two. On the first day of each week, you should each put aside a portion of the money you have earned. Don't wait until I get there and so that we don't have to have a collection once I get there. Now, let me tell you what he's saying. He's saying prioritize what you're going to give to God. If you're making a decision what you're going to give to God when the collection plate has, uh, is being passed, that means you think about him last and not first. Are y'all with me? He even said it. Paul even said it over there. He said, when I show up, you ought to have already known. Why do I already know that? Because I know what's coming in. So if I know what's coming in, I should know what's going out. All right. So first of all, who is your master? Number two, prioritize what is important. And last, begin to pray over your finances.
What does that mean? Uh, I don't know how to spell finance. F I N uh, money. Uh, that, that spell check done killed us, ain't it? Uh, money. Pray over your money. That means every time a check comes in, you ought to thank God for it. When it's time for you to pay your bills, if you're paying bills, when the bill is due, you ain't prioritizing. I think this one due on the 22nd, that one due on the 23rd. You're trying to remember all this. No, no. When you have a budget, you can pay it in such a way that you start having money left over. And you start having credit balances. And some people don't even like that because they'll call me and say, I keep getting this stuff and it says, I don't owe nothing. What do I do now? Don't pay it. <laughs> yeah, ain't that right, Mom? Uh, I mean, uh, you can, if you start finding out what you need and what you don't, you actually get more than you need. Are y'all are y'all ha- here today? So, look, why, why, Pastor, why is this is important? Why is this important? The church, the church, and for those of you who don't go here regularly and you go somewhere, it's true at your church too. Yeah, wherever you go, you ought to, and, and, and if you go here, you ought to support here. If you go there, you ought to support that. Let me me tell you why. Because only in church, only the church system allows you to take from it and not put in it. You can't do that anywhere else. If you believe me, if you believe me, I'm going to tell Michelle to stay after church for a second, and I want y'all to just go over to Chase and just stand there. (laughs) In 30 minutes, she'll be over there snatching you out because they'll have you like this. You just can't stand in there. You, 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 if you want to go see Usher, you ain't going to be able to go see Usher if you ain't got a ticket. They make you put something up front. Only with church can you sit here, suck it dry, and then complain about, I'm getting older now. I'm starting to share. I'm trying to talk like my daddy. I just, and complain about what's going on. You ain't serving, you ain't participating, but got an opinion. Let your, uh, let your opinion in your heart match. <laughs> so what are you saying? If you ever notice, it's a lot of children go back to that children's room. Did y'all know we, did you know that we out of room? We, we have more kids than we have space? I, I'm, I'm just trying to share some vision with you. Do you not know that this room right here where the youth are is, is, is full and they, they got teenagers coming back here. They got junior high in that room. Some of our grandchildren, great-grandchildren are blessed by the ministry of, of reconciliation, teaching people about Jesus Christ. It costs to add on. Amen, somebody. It, it costs to, we're we trying to do some construction. We need to do it in 2025. Or uh, we're going to have to go to two or three services, and then I'm going to preach one, and the elders are going to preach one. The elder said, no, let's figure out this construction thing. <laughs> let's find that money. Uh, but, but we've already gotten the price for it. Uh, it's $850,000, $850,000 to build a new youth out of This ain't just stuff for us to look good. This is stuff for us to do ministry. So you ask yourself, the 300, what can I do? Be consistent. That's, that's, if, if you're going to give $20, give $20 consistently. Because what we ask the church to do is make a budget off of shifty supporters. Are y'all with me? Well, I don't think I'm talking here. I'm just practicing for Sunday. What, what has to happen? You got to live within margins. Because actually, if I live within margin, I'm not losing. I'm actually gaining. Because if he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, live right, and I'll add this stuff to you, he can add better than I can. He can, he can fill in the gaps better than I can. He can do the supernatural better than I can. I never would imagine at 50 I would be where we are financially. And it's not because I'm making a lot. It's because we manage. Are y'all with me? My wife is doing great on her job. And, I'm, and I'm, I told her, she said, how long am I going to work? I said, health and strength. 
I said, what would you do with your free time? I mean, sometimes working helps your mind. Yeah, you just can't sit around, don't have nothing to do. I said, baby, let's, I mean, you know, I said, 80, 85 should be reasonable. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to have church with me. But for what we give over here, God shows up over there. And we don't just give the old God. We don't just give the old God. We have made it a purpose to help people. So the question I have for you today, is your money smart money or dumb money? If it's all being used on you, it ain't blessing you. It needs to be used for the kingdom of God. Amen, somebody. And if you need help, if you need help, uh, we have people here that's willing to help you. If, if you don't mind being transparent, this is what I got coming in every month, I'm sure. Somebody, well, I, I'll be honest with you, it don't matter if it's a man, woman. Jackie Metlin taught me how to budget. And we are, Melanie's and I are better because I'm not too much of a man to listen. I said, now how you do that? How you do that? Because she started telling me that was, uh, you, you get two or three times a year where you get an extra check. I said, I ain't never had an extra check. <laughs> What are you, where are you talking about? You mean to tell me they give you an extra check? And what I found out was when you pay right, you get some months. Melanie's don't know it, but you get some months. Because that goes straight to safety. You get some months where uh, you are able to put, not have to have a bill to pay. But you got to listen to somebody know what they're talking about. Some of us got so much pride, especially the older thing. You can't tell me nothing. Keep doing that. You'll go to your grave struggling when people around you can help you. 